In the second video, we are going to talk about how to edit and clean our point clouds, how to remove unnecessary points from our laser scan from the point cloud and how to find points of interest and how to work with that. Okay, so this software that you see on here is, cloud, is called Cloud Compare. It's an open source the software uh, used for point cloud processing. Um, how it looks like is pretty simple. We have some tabs, which we can use to work with uh, point clouds. We have a database tree here on the upper left side where we will work with um, or import point clouds. Every time you work with a point cloud and uh, recreate something or change something on your original point cloud, a new point cloud will be created inside the database tree. And you can quickly turn each point cloud on and off and work with every point cloud individually. All right, in the properties, we can change the visualization of our point cloud and other options. In the console window here on the lower um, and low, lower part, you see what happened, what's happening inside the software. So when you will import something, it will say that the point cloud is being imported. You can also close this window if you don't want to see it. And on the right side, you have some tools on how to manipulate uh, point clouds or points in your point cloud. All right, so let's import our point cloud that we exported from uh, like a cyclone. We named it scan export uh, dot loss. Let's open it. Uh, and here it asks us what, which columns to import. We're going to leave everything uh, as uh, default. Um, you can also tile your input files and what are in which range of coordinates are your points. Uh, remember, we use the local coordinate system, so that's why we don't have big numbers. Uh, so let's just keep the standard settings and apply this. And now it's going, uh, the software is going to ask us to use global shift and scale. So what this global shift and scale is, it basically means that um, it tries to lower the values of your coordinates. So for example, if you work with uh, in a global coordinate system, which has uh, bigger values for coordinates, like 500,000 or so, then this global shift and scale will find a constant which is changing. And this, in this way, mathematical computations are much more faster and uh, it does not eat up that much memory. So that's why this global shift and scale is important. Uh, here in our case, uh, it's already, the coordinates of the points are all, all already low because we use the local coordinate system which was established in or um, at, at our institute, for example. Okay, so we just say yes. And now our point cloud is being imported into cloud compare. As you can see here, um, our cloud has been recentered with some translation parameters. This uh, importing process does not take that much time and it works pretty fast. Uh, make sure to save your project once you import it because uh, Cloud Compare can crash and then you lose all your work. All right, so here we have our point cloud. How to navigate through our point cloud is again, using the mouse. With using the left mouse button, you can turn around your point cloud. You can turn it around. With using the middle mouse button and holding it, you can zoom in and out as already shown in uh, Cyclone. And with the right mouse button, you can go left or right, up and down. So you can, that's how you navigate through your point cloud. Okay, so let's just keep a basic view. And if you go into your point cloud, the, if you click on it and the database tree, you will see basically the span of the points that you scanned. So this is all the points that we were able to scan from this station. There are points also outside of our institute, which we are going to remove. So we are only going to keep this part, let's say, this part of the point cloud uh, from here up to there. And then at the end, we're also going to remove the roof to be able to find the tables and so on. All right. So first thing is to save this project somewhere. Yeah, because if it crashes again, we're going to lose everything. 
So make sure you find uh, a, a good location for saving this. I have this on my C drive somewhere. Uh, here, like, uh, I'm just gonna create a new folder. Cloud compare. Yes, good. And we're going to name this um, cleaning point cloud. Good, we saved the project. And now if we lose the work, we can always return to the previous state. Good. You can also increase the point size in the lower uh, upper left corner, default point size. You can make it bigger with these steps. So our points will now become bigger. And we can also increase the line with how wide our lines will have. If, if uh, we want to see our point line in different colors, we have to go to the properties panel. And in this properties panel, we can change uh, our, our current uh, display options, right? So let's use, let's use a different type of uh, display. Current one in color scale is gray one. We're using only gray values, but now I want to use blue, green, yellow, and red, let's say. And this will change our point cloud to basically intensity values. So well reflected the areas will be uh, marked red and low reflected areas will be marked green, let's say, okay? So now let's focus first on the data cleaning process. How to clean our point cloud is by using this tool called cross section, okay? This is the easiest way to do it. And inside this cross section, we first have to zoom out and drag those two uh, green arrows accordingly. So we will find a point cloud that's suitable for us and then save the new, new edit. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this green arrow right to the walls of our institute or try to select the area of our kitchen. Uh, we can go a little bit more. Yes, so this is, uh, as you see, here are the two targets. So we're just gonna drag this until the targets. And we have to do this also from the other side. Okay, I have to zoom out a little bit more. Now I'm going to drag this other arrow down to the kitchen area. Uh, yeah, almost there. Just uh, turn it around and see. Yeah, it's uh, good. I think it's okay. That's this, and then we can drag this red one a little bit to work with a small area as possible. Because if we work with a big area, then it's going to be computationally very intensive for the computer. That's why it crashes because it cannot handle that uh, much points. Okay, good. Um, now we've selected our uh, area that we want to work with and we can just uh, clip it or uh, slice it. How to slice this? We have many options. We can slice it to either by polygons, uh, but we are going to use export selection as a new cloud. So once we click on this icon, this point cloud will be exported to a new point cloud up in the database tree. Okay, so let's click on this. Slice. And now it says preparing level of detail acceleration structure for point cloud scan export. And it's processing as you see here, something's happening. Level one, level nine, level 10. Yeah, it took around 14 seconds to select this point cloud and export it. All right. Once we see or um, exported and you know, cropped point cloud here on the database tree, we can close this window down. Let's close this window. And now, as you can see, I have two point clouds right here. The original one, which, is, which has all the points and the new one that I exported myself. All right. So we are going to now work with only this smaller point cloud. And our objective will be to find uh, some objects of interest inside this point cloud. Okay, 
one object of interest will be, let's say, this table. And we are going to measure the diameter of this table. Um, we can also measure the diameter of a pipe, for example, and see how big our pipes are or how thick uh, our pipes are in the office. OK? Uh, but you can just uh, play around with this and uh, get familiar with uh, navigating through the point cloud, how to use this zoom in, zoom out options. And also, you can export any object of interest that you prefer. OK? We're going to do the table and the pipes together. And then you can repeat your, this process uh, alone also. OK? Good. Make sure to save our project. And if you want, you can also export this, uh, this uh, slice later on. Good. So in the next, uh, the second part of this video, we're going to work with uh, exporting only one object of interest and measuring its uh, diameter. Yes, I forgot to tell you about the export. Uh, if you want to export our uh, point cloud, their selected point cloud, we can click on the point cloud and then click File and Save. And we can use this as a LAS file, LAS cloud file. And make sure it has the right name. Scan export cloud section. Yeah. Um, yeah, check the, use the original resolution here. 32 million points. And now it's exporting all the points that we selected. Uh, we, will, we will see. All right. Just uh, check. Export projects. Uh, where was I? Big uh, cloud compare, scan for this one. Apply. Yes, to all. Now it's again. Now we are importing on point cloud back to cloud compare. Take some time. There we have it. Yeah. Now, now we imported our new point cloud back to cloud compare. We can uh, unselect the previous one. And as you can see, the point cloud that we saved as a last file is now the correct one to work with again. You can also work with this one, but I just keep kept that as a backup. So if everything goes goes wrong, I can always return to that one and uh, work with that one. Okay, so this is now going to be the point cloud with which we're going to work with in the second video. All right, thank you.